Welcome back to my garage. Behind me is the supercharged 50cc two-stroke engine running on the nitro methanol. There's an increasing amount of people thinking I'm completely stupid or that I lack the basic knowledge to build and design and develop an engine at all, that I'm hopelessly stubborn and that I lack the ability to build upon what others have achieved before me, the shoulders of giants. There's probably some truth in these statements more in some than others. I'm also more than ever experiencing the slow descent into madness. None of these things bother me much, if at all. What does bother me is that it seems I'm dragging a bunch of you along with me into that slow descent into madness. And we can't have that. I suffer from this masochistic condition where I'm drawn to complex problem solving. Suffering through complex problem solving has to be on the edge of uh, what I can possibly do and can't or can't do. <laughs> and it makes me seem stupid because all my theories are wrong all the time. Anyways, as an early Christmas present and to keep the sanity level of my audience to an acceptable level, we're going back to basics. We're gonna run it on gas. We're gonna decouple the supercharger. We're gonna use a normal car. We'll be in a territory I'm much more familiar with. My theories might work better in that territory. For now, let's drop the jazz for a little while and start with a basic drum beat. This engine was originally designed to run with a secondary valveless intake, a long resonant intake on this side. And then there was a primary intake on the other side for starting and bringing it up to RPM. That's experimental. We're not gonna do that now. We're gonna install a reed valve. Best would be a rotary valve. This engine has a huge crankcase volume and reed valves don't like that huge of a crankcase volume. This should work though for testing. With a reed, it would be best to sink it into the case to take up some volume. That would mean taking the cases apart and machining them for, for this reed, which is not meant to be there when things are working. I'm gonna use an adapter and fit the reed on the outside like this. I was looking through my old parts trying to find something that could work. Some kind of a reed adapter. I've run quite a few reed adapters earlier on uh, various moped builds. I'm running low on aluminium stock so machining something from scratch would be difficult. Then I found this thing which is the adapter between the PIP engine and the roots blower that AMR 300. And uh, there's enough meat here to fit the reed valve inside of this uh, enclosure. This is nowhere near ideal, but for testing purposes, to see how the porting and the pipe and everything behaves. See if there's something fundamentally wrong with my cylinder design, pipe design, everything. I know there's people out there smiling. <laughs> I set up the part the wrong way around, even though I made sure to set it up the right way around, which was the wrong way around. And now I've uh, cut a hole in the side here, and it's uh, unusable. That's uh, typical. The old drill bit <laughs> got really hot. After this failure, which I actually think was from lost steps in the milling machine, it's been sitting for a long while in a cold room and the oil and everything is probably really cold and uh, it's uh, sticking. Probably, I've experienced that earlier. Anyways, these two hole patterns don't match up. I realized by luck that two of the holes match up diagonally 
and two holes is probably enough for testing. I haven't got material thick enough on hand, so I had to make a two-part thing. I reused this thing, which has been used on the other side of the engine earlier. And then this 28 millimeter cane fits here. Not perfect, but perfectly good enough for testing purposes, I think. I was feeling for burrs and uh, I found one. And now it's stuck in my thumb. I decided to drill and tap a couple of holes in this thing. The whole unit will be held onto the engine by two bolts, but uh, will be clamped together by four. I really suck at welding. They're so long in between the times I do weld something. I don't get to practice. There was one spot here. There! These 10 centimeters were good. Looking good to me at least. All of the rest is pretty much fixing holes. I started off with too much amperage and it took me a while to get down to usable numbers. So remember that piece. Remember that section. Forget about the rest. It's a touch now, that's the important part. I've given the carb a quick cleaning, it's been sitting for a while. Installing a 120 main jet. That's typical for uh, these carbs on a 50cc engine, at least for my engines. And a 48 pilot jet, also typical. There's no markings on this needle, but I'll leave the clip in the middle position. Let's check compression. I think I turned off the camera when I thought I'd turn it on. I did a compression test. I saw about 100 PSI. That's typical for this gauge on 50cc engines. I'm not saying this gauge is accurate and that 100 PSI reading is correct. I'm just saying relative to earlier measurements on other engines, 100 PSI is typical for 50cc engines with this gauge in my garage. Filling up with a uh, pre-mixed uh, like chainsaw gas, 2% oil, synthetic, and I'm making a mess. Completely normal gas. We're not using the sliding reed valve for the moment, just a normal reed valve. So I'll disable the sliding reed valve controller in the ignition unit. Our ignition map is pretty normal already. I'll decrease timing at higher RPM though. 9 degrees at 20,000 RPM. And I'll remove the limiter or set it to 25,000. I'll add another step here and bring it down even further. 5 degrees at 25,000. 
for the first time in a really really long while a somewhat completely normal two-stroke engine on this channel last time we run this engine in a uh, a similar configuration we didn't use this ignition unit and i had to set really high timing at low rpm to get it going and i think that really high timing which i couldn't adjust for at higher rpm caused too much heat in the cylinder and the ring expanded too much and caught a port and also my ports weren't properly chamfered they are now i know the squish gap is almost twice what it should be that will affect readings what would be ironic now is that it made a lot of power and under load it detonated itself to death immediately the whole purpose of this is to see how the engine is running in a completely normal state like so many have suggested and wanted for so long i've come to my senses see if there's any issues we need to take care of before we start adding a supercharger and stuff like that i was digitizing the compressor map for the Roltrex unit a few days ago to run some simulations see if that could give me any answers whilst doing that i realized i haven't paid much attention to the surge line in that compressor map and it's uh fairly probable that what we've been experiencing is a uh, compressor surge so airflow is not higher. I haven't underestimated airflow. I've overestimated airflow through the engine. I think that's what's been going on. Definitely got worse with a different ratio, more air. For now, no blower, completely normal two-stroke engine. Let's see how it behaves. First under no load. On second thought, it could be the large crankcase volume, making it act like it's rich under the power band. I'll move the point of uh, 30 degrees of ignition advance to 10,000, then ramping down to 14, where it's at 15,000. And then we'll down jet if, uh, if it doesn't help. When I'm saying not under load, it is pulling the whole assembly. There's just no power connected to the retarder. See what happens. Let's hang on to that thought about rejetting the car for a little longer and uh, check the ignition timing with a timing light just to see that we're uh, roughly where we're supposed to be. I've programmed the unit to stay at 10 degrees throughout the range. Let's see if that corresponds to 10 actual degrees. Perfect. Set the timing, it's staying at 10 degrees throughout the range now, which uh, doesn't work. I've tried reinstalling drivers, turning things on and off, nothing. My uh, USB to serial adapter has died. Isn't that funny? 
the next day I had to abort testing and go buy a new one of these. Now it's working. Here you can see the curve I was running when it wouldn't rev. Basically just a flat line. I wasn't going to rev it any higher than this while testing the ignition. I forgot to reset it and uh, as you saw it can't rev past like 6, 7, 8k without more ignition advance. Normal ignition curve and 110 main jets. ignition curve even higher. There's some weird cutting out going on though. I have some theories about that. Anyone with some experience in tuning engines would hear that this is running rich and jet down. The thing is I don't think it's running rich. It's acting rich. But the problem is the trapping efficiency before the pipe hits. That's our problem. We need to be really careful about jetting down any more than we've already done. Because when the pipe hits, that rich condition might turn into a really lean condition. Quick. The problems we're having with getting it into the power band isn't really an issue if it were mounted in a bike with a clutch. Because then it wouldn't have to spin up the whole assembly here. An issue we will need to address is how it started cutting out when we got into the power band. Could be ignition trouble, could also be loss of compression. I experienced that issue when I uh, went over to the United States to run at Bonneville. Let's try with a fresh plug with a normal gap first. This is the one I've been running uh, with all the methanol testing. Let's try a fresh one and see what happens. Let's try switching the plug out for one with a much smaller gap, 0.3 millimeters, and see how it behaves then. Can't even get into the power band to test how it works. Let's try one with super skinny electrodes and a large gap. up the ignition mate to see if spark is dropping out. That fancy fine electrode spark plug with a large gap made it easier to get past the hump and into the power band. And then our issue became apparent. It's cutting out. I was monitoring spark with the ignition mate. Did not seem like spark was dropping out. Even when it sounded like it wasn't firing at all on its way down from a cutout. I could clearly see ignition here. I'm leaning more and more towards intermittent loss of compression. The ring getting stuck in the ring land sometimes. I've had that happen before. That was because the piston had hit the head and the ring line was slightly pinched. But I'm running a 0.9 millimeter squish gap. The piston can't possibly hit the head with such a large gap. Well you see, I reused the piston from the brute force engine because that was the only piston I had on hand that would fit. Not only did this brute force engine run with a 0.5 millimeter squish gap, it also developed slack in one of the crank bearings. Recipe for hitting the head. That's what might have happened.
the piston certainly looks fine. Same for the ring. No indication of a tight ring line here either. It's nice and free. The cylinder looks completely fine. And there is no signs of wear at all. Spot on 40.00 millimeters. It's highly unlikely the problem is that compression issue I've been talking about. Could be fueling. But that sounds weird with such abrupt cutouts and comebacks. You might remember last time we ran this engine in a similar configuration with reeds and uh, on gas. And I was running this ignition system. We didn't have that problem of cutting out when it entered the power band. We did have the problem of not being able to tune in enough ignition advance for it to enter the power band without it destroying itself from too much ignition advance in the power band. It's a fixed curve ignition. I can't add a bunch of timing down low and not add timing up high at the same time. So we can't use this. I didn't see any ignition problems while monitoring with this unit. It might be this is just too slow or my eyes are too slow to see what's going on. Could be that it's dropping spark and thereby the pipe is dropping out of resonance in one cycle. And then the next cycle it won't fire because everything has gone to shit. Then it takes a couple of hundred cycles for it to come back and then the same thing happens again. Something like that. The spark plug is firing but the mixture is totally wrong for some reason. I don't want peace. I want problems. Always. Someone forgot to close the door to the cellar where all the water pipes and stuff into the house is located and uh, it's all frozen. Who that was is irrelevant. What is relevant is this is all the water I got plus what I dumped out earlier. Let's hope that's enough. I want to say thank you to East Coast Motorsports, Massachusetts, United States for providing airmarked funding for a new chalkboard. This hole will be gone soon. What do we need for a combustion event to occur? Spark. Air fuel ratio within range for the specific fuel used. Air fuel mix to be fairly uniform. Can't be pockets without any fuel at all or pockets with just fuel. If there is, there can be instances where the spark plug is firing a spark in one of those pockets with just fuel and it won't ignite or just air and it won't ignite or not enough air and it won't ignite or not enough fuel and it won't ignite in that localized pocket. For this we need turbulence provided by the squish band and compression and pressure from the pipe and this spark needs to be timed fairly accurate. It needs to occur within an acceptable window of time. I've checked timing with a light this should be okay. The shape of the combustion chamber, the squish band, the pipe, all of that stuff is fairly normal. So this shouldn't be a problem. I'm running normal jetting with a known carb. So this shouldn't really be a problem. This can be a problem. Might be the large crankcase is a problem causing pockets of just air and just fuel. Could be a problem. I don't think it is, but it could be a problem. I still think it is spark. But even if this is displaying discrete events, there's no way for my eyes to pick that up. Say at uh, 15,000 RPM, we're talking 250 events per second. We could have it only firing every fifth event and I would still not be able to pick that up with my eyes. Would be 50 hertz. Just like you can't really see your lights flickering even they're driven from 50 or 60 hertz. I've been looking at some oscilloscopes. We're gonna get one and use that to monitor spark and uh, and graph it over time and see if cycles are dropping out. But now, let's test some different coils. We'll start with this obnoxious coil. See how it behaves. Try a smaller main jet and see what happens. All that fuel spewing out of the car, that's from lots of vibrations at low RPM. Doesn't really bother me 
as long as uh, it's gone in the power band. 100 jet, let's see what happens. Switching to that obnoxious coil did not help. Jetting down did not help. Starting fluid did not help. Holding the carb with my hand to dampen vibrations in case it was flooding did not help. If it spark, I think it's weird how it dies and then takes a long while until it comes back. You'd think the frequency of the cutting in and out would be higher. I'm leaning towards compression. It's happening when the pipe starts hitting. Either it's not able to spark when dynamic compression gets higher or it's losing compression at some point when dynamic compression becomes higher. And I've tried a bunch of different spark plugs and different gaps without any luck. We need that oscilloscope to monitor it properly and see that it's sparking all the time. Then we can rule out spark. Problems always. See you next time. Two strokes suffering. <laughs>